uh, okay, I'm not really a pastor, but although I have my, my seminary training, uh, I had a uh, uh, master's in, in semin- uh, from STM just nearby here in Suramban, and then also I'm doing my doctoral with MBTS as well. Okay, so I was very pleasantly surprised, you know, to see four senior citizens playing music, three, yeah, and the four young people as well. We must give them a pray, I mean, a, a round of applause. The young and the old are together in one church. That is what it's supposed to be. You know, I mean, we are supposed to be living together as a community. Okay, is, there, is the microphone okay? Saying this, you know, he says, uh, hold the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other hand. Now, I'm holding a Bible in my hand and a pointer, <laughs> a, a PowerPoint pointer, you know, on the other hand. I hope I don't have to use uh, this microphone. Yeah. So actually, uh, what I'm going to share with you this today is something very special, something that all of you know, right? All of you have an address, I'm sure. You know, whether it is an address in the house or it's an address on email and so on. But what I want to say is this. We cannot separate ourselves from the world because we are living on this earth, right? We cannot separate ourselves from the world around us, although we are supposed to be separate from the world. Oh, this is really crazy. You know, the Lord tells us to separate ourselves from the world, and yet we cannot separate ourselves from the world. It's such, you know, so difficult to understand. Eh? Not until you study the Word of God carefully. Right? The Bible tells us that we, as believers, need to be in this world. Okay? And yet not of this world. We do not live according to the world, the, the way how the world operates. We do not operate the same way. But we are living in the world. So we cannot separate ourselves from the reality around us. All right? We are still on earth. All right? uh, anybody in heaven already? I am sure nobody here. Right? Otherwise, you will not be having a physical body here. And this is one thing I want to share with you. We all have an address on earth, okay? Now, I wanted to, um, initially this was my title and I was thinking, uh, when I told Mrs. Kwan, then I thought about it, uh, you know, it's so long and so on. But basically that theme is from Jeremiah 29 verse 5. What does Jeremiah 29 verse 5 say? It says, build houses and live in them and plant gardens and eat their produce. Dr. Kwan has a farm, right? Right, that's what he's doing. Plant your gardens. What does that mean? You know, what does that mean? I'm going to share with you, we cannot separate ourselves from the world. So, while I'm not in politics, for example, I am still in touch with what is happening around the world. I mean, around the country as well. And so we have to have the Bible, as what Billy Graham said, Bible on one hand, and the newspaper on the other hand. Otherwise, we cannot watch and pray, right? The Lord says, watch and pray. He does not only say, pray only, all right? He says, watch and pray. Hi, Brad Junhao. How are you? Right. I'm glad that uh, Brad Junhao can make it today. I was hoping that I could see him such a wonderful young man. Right. So wonderful that I really feel you know, so touched to see him today walking in. Now, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 5, build your houses, plant your gardens. I have struggled this for many, many years. I've been a Christian for 40 over years and I've been struggling with this. Because why? Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So in other words, look towards heaven. Don't care about your studies. Don't care about anything around you. Don't care about the environment that you are living in, the housing estate you are living in, whether it's clean, dirty and so on. 
just look towards heaven. But what somebody has said is very true. Are you too heavily hard-minded that you are of earth, no earthly use at all? That's what Jeremiah 29 verse 5 says. As I studied the scripture and I, I attended uh, seminary uh, training, it helps a lot to have some historical background to this verse. Then you can understand it better. So this is where I'm going to take you on a time machine. Okay, I, I'm having a difficulty. I don't know whether I can use Siaran Tegendala sebentar. Okay, so basically we need to know what is happening I mean, around us. Okay, And in order for us to understand Jeremiah 29 verse 5, we need to go back into the history of, in the history of Babylon and so on. What happened during that time? So let's take a ride on the time machine, right? Buckle your seat belt, okay? And it's going to, when I count to zero, it's going to take off. Okay, are you ready? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero! Okay, here you are. We are now into the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrian Empire was around 746 to 609 before Christ. How many years ago was this? This was about 3,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago. Okay, this was the Assyrian Empire. And then you have the Babylon Empire. So one empire after another. The Babylon Empire was between 609 to 539 BCE. Okay, don't worry about the dates and the years and so on. Okay, you're not going to sit for exam for this. Okay, just to give you an idea, the Assyrian Empire came first, then the Babylon Empire. If you cannot remember, remember A, B. A, Assyrian, B is Babylon, okay? And then after you have Persian Empire, right? You have the Persian Empire. And you have the Macedonian Empire, okay? And after that, of course, you have the Roman Empire as well. Now, we're going to go into another phase, go a little bit more in depth into the Babylonian Empire. So, take on your seatbelt, put on your seatbelt. We're going to go right and zoom into the Babylon Empire right now, okay? Babylon Empire is so big. And you choose this place because you want to know what actually happened, all right, in the time of Jeremiah. It's called the New Babylonian Empire, okay? And this was the, where the name Nebuchadnezzar. I remember when we study history, we have a struggling with this what? Ne what? Ne what? How to remember all these names, you know? Okay, but you know, this gave us a perspective. He was a very cruel king. Very, very cruel king. And that is where he conquered. Okay, he conquered the rest of the world. Okay, he conquered the rest of the world around that time. Okay, this is more the Middle East world. Okay, and then he reigned over Babylon for just about 40, 50 years only, okay? And during that time, he was the one who besieged Jerusalem. He attacked Jerusalem and he destroyed the temple. He destroyed the temple. Every stone was thrown down. And just the other day, I was thinking, you know, we, we heard about the Eastern Gate. Why wasn't the Eastern Gate thrown down? Then I looked back again and reflected it. Actually, the, and Jesus said, not even a stone will be on each, you know, stacking on each other. He actually meant the, the, the stones in the temple itself, not the gates of Jerusalem. Okay? So do not think that the gates are actually part of the temple. It's not part of the temple at all. Okay? That's why it still remains. Okay? So we have Nebuchadnezzar, very cruel guy, okay? And we have Uncle Jeremiah. Uncle Jeremiah 
is what you call, uh, most people say he is a weeping prophet. Okay? He would be the one who speaks you know, God's word and he would cry and cry and cry and cry. He would say, you know, repent, you know, or you will be destroyed. When other prophets are saying, oh, God is going to bless Jerusalem and so on. He was the so-called the negative one who spoke the word of God. And there were people who hated him. They wanted to kill him. And Jeremiah lamented over the destruction of Jerusalem. It happened. You know what he said had, had happened. Okay? So you have to understand the historical background. Then you can understand why Jeremiah 29 verse 4 and 5 comes into the picture. It's the, within this context. And you see, the, when the Jerusalem temple was destroyed, around 587, 86, okay, you were among those people, you know, who were taken on exile, young and old, taken on exile. You remember Daniel? Daniel is there, right? Daniel was also taken on exile, right? Now you see the picture, the whole picture, all right? You became slaves in Babylon. All of you have to start working hard. From morning, 6 o'clock, you wake up until night time, 12 o'clock. Dr. Kwan works very late, right? Okay? You got to keep on working and working and working and working. Not non-stop. And you built something that does not belong to you. It's not going to be part of your city. Not going to be part of the place you're going to be staying forever. You know? This is the place where your king, Nebuchadnezzar, all right? is a cruel king. Think about it. Nebuchadnezzar had slaughtered a lot of people. And now you have to build all these monuments like Ziggurat. Okay? To his glory. How would you feel? How would you feel? You already taken an exile. But you are to do all these things you know, and if you look at uh, the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were the three friends of, I think, uh, Daniel as well. They were thrown into the furnace, very hot furnace, very hot furnace. So you can imagine how cruel it, you know, the king was, King Nebuchadnezzar. Can you think of any? kings in Malaysia who does this kind of thing? So far we have not, right? Okay? But they had gone through all this. And Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Also by Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, sorry, by King Darius. The, the king after Nebuchadnezzar. And he was being thrown in there. But I want to remind you that Daniel, when he was in Babylon, he was learning everything that he could learn in the palace. He was being taught. He was being educated in the palace. Do you remember that book of Daniel? When you read it, you find that he was actually being educated in Babylon itself, in the palace itself. He learned everything. So that is the reason why I say to the young people, while you are here on earth, do as what Daniel did. He spent time to pray, but at the same time he learned everything he could in the palace where he was serving as a subject to the king. He did not say, oh, I only spend my time, devote myself only in prayer but he also learned all the things in the palace. The same thing with Moses. He was trained in the palace of Egypt. And then only he came out and he was leading God's people. So while you are still young, you know, especially all the young people I see, you know, you all have talents. Go and learn, a, play the guitar, 
go and learn pia- play the piano because someday the church may need you, you know, to play the songs. So you have to really put in your effort to learn whatever you can, you know, in so called the world. We cannot separate ourselves from the, the rest of the world, okay? And here you have, we are all sitting beside the river of Babylon. There was one singer who came up with this song, By the rivers of Babylon, of oh, this uh, sister already singing already, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not a good singer, so I'm not going to disgrace myself here. But, you know, I mean, this is the, what they were going through. The pain of leaving the, their own motherland and coming to a new place where they are foreigns, foreigners and they had to work very hard to serve a very cruel king. Right? This is what it was, all the, the, the things that they were happen, uh, was happening to them. And that's why they have this Psalm 137. Okay? And here we have, This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Right? Yes, this world is not my home. Not this world is not your home too. We are just passing through. But we must always remember, we have a role to play in this world. The world that we are living in. Okay? That is the reason why your church has this team called Kingdom Life. All right, kingdom mindset. Very important. We must understand our, our role as salt and light of the world. Okay? So Jeremiah, he, was, he knew that the captivity is going to be 70 years. 70 years, huh? That means one generation, almost like most of us, I'm already 60 years old. So I have already lived more or less uh, to that level. Right? Another 10 more years, maybe I can go back to Jerusalem, uh, back, go back to Jerusalem you know, where God resides. Right? To go back to heaven. Lah. Okay? But meanwhile, the time is not yet, means not yet, right? So what we have to do here is this. Jeremiah tells them, this is what the Lord, the, word, the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says to the, all the exiles that I've sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Sorry. Build houses and live in them. Build houses and live in them. Okay? Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Okay? Plant your gardens and eat their produce. Normal lifestyle, okay? daily lifestyle that you have is something that is honoring to God as well. All right, those of you who have no wives, okay? the Bible says, take wives and father, sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may give birth to sons and daughters and grow in numbers and do not decrease right because god has a bigger vision for the people he knows that the moment he takes them back into israel he needs to have people to populate the area okay we're not talking about the modern israel we're talking about the ancient israel okay we're talking about the time when god was working on israel Okay, and this is what he said. Seek the prosperity of the city where I have sent you into exile. Think again. King Nebuchadnezzar was such a wicked king, right? And you have to treat him like a king and seek the prosperity of the city after his name. I think a lot of us will shake our head and say, why, Lord? Why should we be doing that? You know, why should we be doing that? We, we should be doing something else. No, but the Lord says, seek the prosperity of the city where you live, right? And pray to the Lord 
in its behalf. How often do we pray for Malaysia? How often do we pray for Suramban? You know, how often do we pray for the things around us, the happenings around us? Do we know what is happening around the world? Do we know what is happening in our city, in our country, in where our, our region here, like the ASEAN countries and so on? So this is where the Lord says, pray to the Lord in His behalf and, in his proper, in, and for its, in, pros, in its prosperity will be your prosperity. Right? It is only when the, the city itself is prosperous, okay, only then you can be prosperous. That's the word of God. As simple as that. Once you know the historical background, you begin to appreciate the context of what is read here in Jeremiah 29. And so this is how I begin to see, wow, you know, it's so wonderful to know what the Lord was actually speaking and why he said this, you know, in the past, why did he say this? So in short, I want to say this. Jesus said the same thing as well. He said, you are the salt of the earth. And the salt has, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by people. Matthew 5.13 And it says, kingdom living means seeking first the kingdom of God. Right? But at the same time, we also need to be salt of the earth. See, we have the role to play on earth because our address is still here on earth. And now I want to take you on the travel time machine again. All right, back into the 21st century. Okay? We can, as I said, we cannot separate ourselves from the country, what is happening in the country. Right? A lot of us will say, okay, the church and the, and the state must be separated. Okay, that's based on the Reformation, Reformation uh, uh, teaching, which is true. We, have, we cannot have the two uh, powers coming together, but we cannot separate ourselves from what is happening around. So I'm going to give you a picture and an idea of what is actually happening in the country right now so that you can pray intelligently. Right? You can pray intelligently. So I'm not into politics. Eh? I don't get myself into, into politics. Okay, long time ago in um, uh, Boston, there was this guy called Oliver Wendell Holmes. And he was an American poet. And this is what he said. Some people are so heavenly that they are of no good, no earthly good. So in other words, we have a role to play. We cannot be too heavenly that we don't understand our role on earth. But Jesus said, you are the salt and you are the light of the world. Okay? And Dr. Billy Graham once said, world events are moving very rapidly. Right? It's true, isn't it? What's happening in Israel, Gaza and so on. And what happened between Russia and, and Ukraine and so on. All these things are happening very fast. I pick up the Bible in one hand, right? And I pick up the newspaper on the other hand. This is what Dr. Billy Graham said. Without having the newspaper on the other hand, with just the Bible, you won't have the context of what God is doing today unless you begin to understand what is actually happening today. You will not be able to understand the prophecies of God, you know, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament. What God had already told us will happen, now you are reading in the newspaper, then you begin to realize this is what it was. I personally do not believe in interpreting the prophecies. I believe in mulling over the prophecies, thinking over it over again and again, and what does it what, what is it that you're saying, you know, uh, you're going to return like a thief in the night? What does that mean? 
All right? I don't have the answer. Okay? I don't have the answer. But when it comes and when it happens, then I know, yes, this is what you said. Right? Remember Simeon? Simeon was in the temple and he was marling who is this child that God had promised that he would see. He marled away. Right? He marled away. And then when the baby Jesus was presented to him, he said, praise the Lord, this is the child that I've been waiting for many, many years in order for me to see. Right? So this is what we have. Do you sweep the Bible on one hand and the newspaper on the other hand? Right? The Bible tells us what's going to happen and the newspaper tells us what has happened. And when it happened, we know this is the fulfillment of God's word. And that is the reason why it's important for us to know what is actually happening, especially what's happening in our own country. We are not talking about outside the country because there's so many things you can talk about. I think you will all be sleeping by the time I finish, but let's concentrate on just Malaysia. All right, I'm going to run through this very quickly. Okay, and um, I want you to know this. You need to to keep an eye on seeing everything that is happening. Observe, all right? Observe the trend and, and so on. Then you begin to know how to pray for the country because we are in a transition, okay? As many of us know, you know, the country is actually in, in, you know, in debt, okay? And we have uh, lost a lot of money, okay? Almost about 4.5 trillion. I don't know how to calculate 4.5 trillion. A lot of zeros, you know, in 26 years alone. Okay? And then you have uh, GDP of almost about 80% of GDP, about 1.5 trillion ringgit in debts. Okay? So, yeah, 1.5 trillion, and we can become bankrupt like any other countries around the world. Countries like Sri Lanka, Egypt, and so on. We can easily go bankrupt if we are not careful. But you know, a lot of us, we've been praying and praying and praying, God send revival, God do something for this country, but we are not observing to see what is actually happening. Okay, so this is where I say God has answered our prayers. Many of our prayers are already answered. Okay, look at the anti-corruption campaign, for example. If you read the newspaper every day, every week, all right? There's so many of these cases. So many of these cases. In fact, I suggested to uh, Tansri Azambaki, all right? I do have his WhatsApp. Uh, that's why Dr. Kwan asked me to share some of these little you know, things. Huh? I told him, I said, Tansri, you are not going to be able to fight corruption by just arresting people. There are so many of them you're going to fill up the prisons packed with people. So what do you need to do? You need to use the media to tell the rest of the people to not get involved in corruption. And so I think they came up with this channel which you can go to TikTok and you can just look for PDRM. You can see a lot of cases, okay? A lot of cases being, uh, being uh, uh, published. And you can read the newspaper as well. So the anti-corruption case campaign now is very, very uh, strong, okay? Uh, our friend um, Daim also is one of the big fish that has already been caught. In the past, we, we say, oh, we never get any big fish, only small fries only. We pray, and here, God answered the prayer, right? I remember when we were in Mozambique, my wife and I were staying in Mozambique. She was working there. I remember Daim flying to Mozambique every four months on a chartered flight. Okay? Because he had about nine banks around Africa. So that was how you know, rich a man can be. And now you can see a lot of cases, senior cops also get jailed, 12 months jail. Okay. And foreigners also get arrested because they wanted to give uh, sorry, they wanted to give bribes. You know giving bribes can end you up in jail 
Do you know that? The policeman stops you. Che, eh? police uh, actor. Boleh. Okay, next moment you will be in jail. If the policeman doesn't accept it, he can put you in jail straight away. Uh, with the, just through the, 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 what you call the magistrate court, you can go to jail already. Okay? So businessmen also, also can get charged as well for giving bribes. So brothers and sisters, we must be aware of all this news that is happening. And this is a very positive trend. Because why? The moment you wipe off corruption and bribery, okay, businesses are going to thrive. Why? Because investors are going to come in and say, we trust your business community. And we are going to invest in this country. My story, okay, with bribery. I remember when I was driving, okay, in, uh, along the Federal Highway, then there was supposed to be a, a, a church event, a Christian event at the stadium. Then when I realized that I had overshot that overhead bridge that goes to that, that place, I saw no cars around me, no police cars also. I reversed a little bit, I went up there, and the, <laughs> the, white, the white uniform policeman was waiting there. Benti. Okay? I said, sorry, Tuan. Saya minta maaf. Tapi saya kena pergi uh, ada church punya event lah. Oh, church punya event lah. Okay? He said, church punya event lah. So, he knows, he knows that most probably I'm not his customer. Okay? So, he said, okay, pergi. It's only when you start giving, Right? And they know that you are the victim, so-called the, the person who can give, that they will continue looking for you. Okay? But if you are the person who's, who does not give, like for me, last time my car, behind my car, there was a, a sticker, Bribe Free Malaysians, BFM. All right? That saved me also one occasion when the, another policeman knocked on that glass, glass uh, the, you know, the back, back glass do, uh, thing, uh, he said to the guy who was speaking to me, ah, don't, don't waste time on this guy. Lah. So after that, I was let go. Okay? But very important, you must realize we cannot give bribes. The moment you give bribes, if the policeman decides not to take your bribe, because he can get it from the government. If he puts you in jail, he can get it the same amount from you, from the government. Okay? You can buy bye to your family members for maybe six months, eight months, one year. Okay? So be very careful. Do not do this, giving of bribes. So we also have a lot of losses as well, okay? Through smuggling and so on. Okay? I mean, these things happen without us realizing it. Until recently, we, 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 we realized that, oh, the subsidy is going to be cut. Okay? Because country cannot continue bearing the the, the burden of paying all the subsidies and so on. So all these diesel prices start to go up, no more subsidies. All these people who were smuggling were raided. You can go to YouTube, you can go to KP, I mean they can go to TikTok and look for KPDN, Kementerian Perdagangan Dalam Negeri, and you can see all these raids that are done. It has not happened before in the past. It's happening now. Every day, every week, you can see it. Okay? New cases. Also, we have a lot of cases on radicalism in the past. Okay? Remember this last year? You cannot put Merry Christmas yeah, on, the ice, uh, on the cake itself. Who says that? Somebody said, oh, Jakim, lah, this and that. Okay? But I was very glad that this time around, the response by Jakim and by the Minister of Religious Affairs was very fast. Okay? Look at this. Abang Johari from Sarawak say it's okay. Why must you bring up this kind of issue? Come to Sarawak. You know, you can have your cake with a Merry Christmas. We have people speaking on our behalf. You know, praise the Lord. 
right? And no restrictions from the religious minister himself. And look at the information that was published by Jakim. He said, no problem at all, right? So the issue was straight away solved, okay? So we have to be patient, right? Do not be so negative and listen to so many different things. You must observe yourself. You must watch what's happening in the country yourself. Be patient and continue to pray intelligently. And we, in the past, I used to complain and say, why the Malays do not speak up at all? A lot of them are afraid to be ostracized by their community at the moment to speak up for non-Malays. But now we have got a lot of young people, old people as well. This is, uh, these are some other examples you can see in TikTok. And uh, you know, practically every day, you have people speaking up on behalf of the non-Malays. I was so delighted to see all these things. You know, even the, I think it's Ustaz, I think, they are all speaking up. You know, they are saying that all this radicalism is wrong. You know, all these things are wrong. You know, we should not allow this kind of things to happen. And I say, praise the Lord. You know, it used to be they were very afraid. And even the, the deputy IGP as well. The deputy IGP say, don't make corruption at a race issue at all. Pray for reforms. We need to pray for reforms. And I know we have, the Lord has already answered a lot of our prayers. But we need to continue to pray. You know, we need to continue to jia you. You know, we have to put in more power to our prayers. You know, we have to pray for more reforms to be done. It will take time. Okay, but we need to continue to pray. Now, just recently, uh, this uh, chief secretary of the government, Mohamed Zuki, retires, right? And after he retired, new people took over, younger people took over. And a lot of them now are very active in terms of their walkabout. You know, they're going around to see whether they are, all, the, all the things are moving properly or not, okay? They go down to the ground, okay? And ah, this is a very interesting story. I know the time is up, okay? But... You know, for so many years, almost 60 years, we have a lot of stateless people who do not have ICs. Okay? But let me share with you, this is a, a, a message from a, a very senior DAP person in, in, uh, in Perak. He says, on final count, 21 persons got their ICs already. Just from his group of people. From my group of people, at least half of them Right? I don't have that many, about 12, 13 people. Half of them already got the ICs already. Right? And this is one of the examples she wrote in the Malaysia Kini. Her child was only 10 years old and she didn't have an IC because of no, because, sorry, no, no, no citizenship. Because of that, the family couldn't go back to Miri. You know, you need to take your papers to bring the child also back. If no papers, you cannot. The citizenship papers and so on. And some of them already started receiving letters from the KDN. Okay? There's a lot of delight. This message is from, okay, from the Minister of Home Affairs. Okay? He said, this year alone, I'm going to concentrate on uh, 15A, Bakara 15A. Okay? Anak angkat dan anak tidak sah masih the process ini fokus saya sekarang, and because of this focus that he has for the whole of this year, you see a lot of cases. The newspaper don't publish it. I'm very sad to say that we have got so many cases. The newspaper not willing to publish it. Okay, but there are many, 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 many cases, right? That's happening, and the first time I see a, a home minister really taking care of the stateless people. It has never happened because it's not going to bring votes for them. They are distributed around the whole country. How can they vote for one person in their own constituency? So Saifuddin is also being attacked from all corners. You know, you hear this, that and so on. But just be, be informed of what he is doing for the, for the stateless people. And I must say that no one has gone through so much persecution as Anwar, right? 
I mean, this is, I, I won't play the, youth, the, the video for you, but he is just claiming that uh, uh, Anwar was thrown into the prison, not because there was a uh, wrongdoing on his behalf, okay, he was just being thrown in, I tank up, okay, I tank up and throw him there, okay. And we have our Joseph in Malaysia, right? From prison to become prime minister, to the point that even Reuters says it's a hard to believe journey. You know, it's because of our prayers, because of your prayers, brothers and sisters. This is happening in our day and time. You know, this is already happening. God has already done this work for us. But are we aware of this? Are we even aware of this? Okay, Fadila is the Deputy Prime Minister from Sarawak. It's the first time a Sarawakian is picked as a Deputy Prime Minister. He's a very friendly guy. And I think uh, Jun Hao is not here, right? He's gone to talk. Uh. But during the time when Jun Hao was in uh, Myanmar, right? You all were praying very hard, right? I know a lot of you were praying for, for him. This is the man who helped to charter the whole plane and bring them back safely. I still remember, um, you know, I was communicating with him by WhatsApp and so on. I said, Datu Sri, you know, a lot of people um, are stranded in Myanmar. I didn't know much about that. But it was through somebody from Ipo, a pastor from Ipo, who told me that I was like, okay, who? I mean, I do not know her at all. Okay? And she told me that uh, there are many people who are stranded there. If there's a fighting between the juntas and the, the military, some of them will be killed. All right? So when I told Datu Sri, I said, you know, you should try to do something to help them. Then after that, the chartered flight was allowed okay, to fly them back. At that time, I didn't even know Jun Hao's name was there. I got the name from somebody in a seminary who knows your church. And they say, there's somebody uh, by the name of Jun Hao. Can you check the, whether he's on the flight? I look at the list. Hey, Lee Jun Hao's name is in there. I'll say, wow. Praise the Lord. I mean, God answers your prayers. Do you realize that? All right. With the help of the Deputy Prime Minister, whom I happen to know for many years, right? For at least about seven, eight years, we've been communicating. And for the first time, you see this happening in Malaysia, the Chinge, during the parade. I remember last year, when this happened, only I, re I remember, I actually messaged several people. I said, why don't you have something more multicultural for, per for your parades? And this year, they managed to get the chingi. Maybe hopefully next year, I know my daughter is saying, time's up, time's up, okay? But I'm going to go very quickly, okay? So all these things have happened because God has answered our prayers, okay? And your prayers, right? So we need to read the Bible and we read the newspapers, okay? And all of us know the handphone has got both of them. You can't give the excuse, I can't buy the newspaper anymore, right? And Jesus said, watch and pray. Okay, not only pray, but also watch to see what's a trend around the world, okay? And remain relevant in this world, okay? And remember Jesus said, when the, the lawyer asked him, you know, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God. And then the second part is, okay, the, that's, the, uh, that's the vertical part. Okay, our relationship with God. Okay, but he also said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, and that is the horizontal part. And when you put them together, it is basically what the cross is all about. Okay. So you are the salt of the earth, right? And this is basically what the kingdom mindset is all about. We have a role to play in the world, okay? And we are also the light of the world as well, 
Okay? We are the light of the world as well. And this is what, as Pastor Kwan has said, our kingdom mindset. Do something around the world. If you see there's bullying cases, right? Speak up. You know? Or if the school has got problems, if you are a police officer, go to the school and put on your uniform and give a short lecture to all the children. Okay? When they chop down trees, you plant trees instead. Plant more trees. Otherwise, the next generation will have a tough time. Uh, don't give bribes and discourage people from giving bribes. Don't accept bribes as well. Don't ask for it as well. Because you know the, the punishment. Okay? And do something about the world around us. Because this is the city that we are, where God has placed us for the next 70 years of our life. Do you care for the world around you? Do you just destroy the world? Build your houses. Okay? Take wives and, and so on. And seek the prosperity of the city that God has sent you. And this is Surumban. This is where God has placed you. And this is the place that God wants you. Only then, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 means something to us. For I know the plans I have for you. The plans for welfare and for good. To give you a future and a hope. Right? So, my brothers and sisters, try to put yourself down on earth. Learn whatever you can, whether it's the arts, whatever it is, learn, go and learn. Do the things that God wants you to do around your community. Right? This is a church without walls. Go out, do Go to Royong. Make an impact. I remember I recommended, I suggested this to a church in Klang. It was a big church. And one Sunday, what they did was they all went out to do the Go to Royong. And we invited the press, we invited the minister, and so on. We do all the whole day in Go to Royong, cleaning up the place. I still remember I went, you know, with the <coughs> thing, eh? what do you call that? The, 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 the chankul. And they, the, 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 the people around the community say, where are you from? I say, we are all from the church. Huh? Got church here? I thought it was a, you know, a cinema. Old cinema, but it was turned into a church. They didn't know. You know? So this is where you have a role to play. This is the kingdom mindset. This is what your church is about. The church without walls. Go out. Do something for the community and make an impact. Be salt of the earth and light of the world. Thank you so much. No, that, I think it's time for me to just say, why not uh, reserve the clap to the Lord? Okay? And more importantly, I want you all to respond, to think about this, right, as the musicians play, to think about this, because this message is very important. It's not just a, a message. It's a, it's a message that will have to sing into your, your heart. And you need to know what God wants you to do. And then you respond. Respond to what God wants you to do. Okay, are the musicians ready? So I want to just call um, upon Dr. Kwan as well. We'll pray for you. For those of you who feel that God has spoken to you today, this morning, from His Word, you have a role to play. You know that God wants you to do something around your community, to make an impact. What is it that God has wanted you to do for so many years and He has tried to speak to you and today it has sunken in? Would you just come forward would you just come forward? We'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. What a beautiful name it is. 